Hello and welcome to another week of The Pastor's Heart. We're so excited you could join us this week. Our guest this week is Pastor Levi Rozier from Harvest Builder Center. Yes, sir. Uh, before we get into all the good stuff that's going on there, uh, we want to remind you of a few things. First and foremost, our prayer line is up and running, 478-474-3986. Or you can email us, prayer at wgnm.com. Uh, we believe in the power of prayer. If something is going on in your life, you need to reach out, call that number. We will pray for you. If you want us to call you back, if you get the machine, uh, call it. We'll, we'll call you back. If you leave your number, please be clear on the machine. Sometimes we get people that aren't clear. Make sure you're clear so that we can co contact you back. Uh, regardless of that, we're going to pray for you. Uh, even if you don't want us to call you back, we are going to pray for that prayer request because we believe in the power of prayer. And uh, we want you to uh, understand that that's an awesome point of contact. Uh, has nothing to do, it doesn't cost you a thing. It doesn't, uh, we're not pay, charging you for prayer. We want you blessed and we want God to intervene in whatever's going on in your life. And that's why we offer that. Um, the other things, I always remind you of it, WGNM.com. We stream our signal around the world uh, over the internet. If you've got friends or family uh, that maybe uh, you think they need to see this program or, uh, or whatnot, mm. you can always go to WGNM.com and look over there on the left-hand side. There's a, a, a Watch Us Now, Watch Our Live Stream. Click on it. A Windows Media file will open, and uh, you'll get to watch whatever's going on the air uh, here at WGNM. Uh, that's around the world. Anybody that's got a good quality internet connection can pick that up and watch it at any time. And it's a great, great service, and we put that out there for you. Um, you can also find information on the website, uh, program schedules. You can contact me, the whole works. Uh, you can contact the staff for different things. I want to remind you, too, my email address is gm at wgnm.com. Uh, if uh, for any reason you, uh, you would like for me to come speak at an event, you have a, a, a dinner or a social of some sort, or, or even if you want me to come speak at your church for something, I'm more than willing to do that. Uh, also, if you have questions about the station, uh, I can answer those. Just got one this morning about uh, where has this ministry gone or what's happened here mm -hmm. and why did you change this on your program? And uh, I always respond to those emails because uh, I take my viewer emails uh, very, very seriously. So uh, uh, I'm, I'm thinking that some of the people at CTN headquarters wish I took their emails as seriously <laughs> as I do my viewer emails. So uh, please just uh, make your, jot that down if you ever want to uh, just email me. Hey, we like your programming or hey, we think this could change or whatnot. Please feel free just to email me and I'll answer you as best I possibly can. That's good. So That's there good. we go. Uh, got all my info out of the way. Uh, our guest this week is Pastor Levi Rozier of Harvest Builder Center in uh, Warner Robins, Georgia. Thanks for being with oh, us. Good to, be here. good to be here, brother. Really uh, we're going to give you some information about uh, Harvest Builder Center. Uh, they're meeting uh, in Warner Robins, like I said, on North Davis Road. They're at the uh, Warner Robins Conference Center uh, Sundays at 10 a.m. That's right. Uh, and it's just a time of, of awesome teaching and preaching and just going gangbusters. Oh, we love it. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. <laughs> uh, let's talk just briefly. Uh, I want to talk just briefly about the church, and then we want to just kind of get to know you a little okay. bit better, too. Okay. What can people expect when they show up at 10 a.m. on a Sunday morning there at Harvest Builder Center? The question you asked is the question that we, we, we decided upon when we first got started. It was how if, if I visit, visit a place, how do I expect to feel when I get there, and how do I expect to feel when I leave? Well, our objective is to make people feel warm, cared mm -hmm. for, relaxed, built up, and in charge when they leave. That's our big, my big concern because I've come out of a traditional background where the thing is, you know, you walk in the church and everybody turned their head, looked at you, you didn't feel comfortable about being in a place. Right. But my goal and heart, my heart is to make, when people come to us. That they feel charged, feel loved, feel comfortable right. in the environment, be casual and relax and enjoy the service and, and leave their charge relaxed and, 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 and go and kind of make a difference whatever where they go to. So that's my goal when they come to our house. That's great. Now let's let's talk about your background a little okay. bit. Okay. Um, just give us a, a brief testimony of, of where you were, where God's brought you. 
I, and I got started ministry in 1996, and I was a co-pastor for, for about four or five years in Forsyth, Georgia. Um, and then the Lord led me to Harvard Cathedral uh, uh, with the Pastor Steve in Macon. And we've been there, my wife and I have been there um, for five or six years. And we've, we've been ministering, but God's always been a call in our lives to start a pastor church. But here recently, the last two years, something happened to my wife, my, my, my wife and I's life where she went to a traumatic um, surgery. My wife was a diabetic, and she had a surgery, and she had to have a transplant. Well, the transplant, the surgery was, was taking place in Minnesota. We had to go to Minnesota, fly to Minnesota, and we stayed there for about a month and a half. The church paid for us, prayed for us. But the finances were strong, help on us, but God provided. But during that time, I had no family out there. All I had was this book, the mm -hmm. Purpose Driven Church book, to read. Right. It, it, it was, to me, it wasn't easy reading, I just, but I had nothing else to do but to read. And during that time, I was reading that book, and the Lord spoke to my heart so strong that it was time. And, and I read the book, and it was kind of, I'm, I'm a very methodical guy. I can do stuff, do stuff for God, but I'm methodical, okay? Go show me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just going to plan out. But nevertheless, God spoke to my heart so strong about how he cared for me and what he wanted to do. So soon after my wife and I came out of that transplant, she came back home in Georgia. I immediately met my pastor, and he confirmed to me that it was time. Mm -hmm. And the journey started two years ago to now. To now. To, of, of us walking out um, the call to go out on our line. And so it's that, knew the, we knew the call was there, but when that, when that hit our, our family, caught us off guard, um, and God spoke to my heart to start it. It was time to go. It was time to go. It's time to go. Now, well, let's talk real briefly about, um, in general, uh, some church government, uh, not to put one form of church government right. down over another, but, right. but just. We talked a lot about releasing. Um, how important is that? Oh man, you just wouldn't believe. Um, but you know, just knowing that my pastor supported and confirmed and released us out is was the was to me the most important thing of the call. Mm -hmm. um, following scripture and obeying scripture, have someone to kind of oversee and headship. Not, not to rule over you, just much to help govern you. Um, and having my pastor, or uh, father figure, release me out was powerful. I come out of a, I kind of come out of a family where my father was not there, mm -hmm. and had been the oldest son, having to help lead my family with my, with my mom and have his eight of us. Um, I never wanted that position to take the lead, but I was, it was forced to take the right. lead. Um, so as I got into this church business, I realized, God, I I know the importance. Of not having one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Not know how I feel not to have someone right. that's the leading guy. You have to take the responsibility on things you, that, that you really shouldn't have to do. So when I got in the house, hold of faith, and realized I, the, the apostolic and all this stuff about leadership and and someone releasing you out made sense to me. Uh huh. You know. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, there's a. I mean, he gives us pictures of how things are supposed to govern. Right. And the family is a very good picture oh. of what the church is. I mean, there's several pictures of what the church is supposed to look right. like, but one of them is definitely yes. the family. And there's a there's a that father figure that's supposed to be the head of the household Correct. is very much so true in the, the household of faith. Correct. Correct. There's somebody who's the head, and there's somebody who's a father figure and raises sons mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. And then I think the biggest see I come from an area in another state that. Um, uh, the, the, they never got a hold of the releasing. Okay. And so because of that, that brought strife. I can and, and a lot of, I mean, in, for 20-something for years, I didn't think you could start a church without there being a split. Okay. I mean, okay. that was, okay. <laughs> there was that none of this sense. releasing <laughs> stuff. I mean, you know, well, this is way <laughs> too peaceful. Um, and so, you know, there's, it was something that I've seen in other churches uh, in the last probably 10, 15 years where there was a releasing. And, um, but I never saw it in the circles that I was okay. in. Okay. I thought, well, that seems awfully peaceful. <laughs> um, and yet we see, you know, in, in, here in this situation, there's a, there was a peaceful yeah. releasing. Right and support in that regards and, 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 and knowing that that's just, there's something about that. There's but just something very peaceful. The thing about it also, Ken, is that it also helped the people who's following you. Right. It's connecting to you. 
you know. They don't have to feel guilty about going <laughs> going on. You know, if they were in Harvest Cathedral and they feel called to, to come, there's, they know that they're... Right. Yeah. It's, it's, just, it's just a sense of assurance, and those who are um, coming alongside, want to be a part of what we're doing, they feel comfortable that I have a pastor, mm -hmm. that I relate to. Right. You know, it just, it just, it just, it just make it, it's all good all across the board. Exactly. You know, um, exactly. Church splits hurt. You know. Oh, big time. <laughs> I've watched it. There's a, there's a section uh, of the city that I was in that is economically depressed, wow. and we have watched it over the course of the last 30 years <clears throat> or so. I mean, talk about going downhill. Uh, going from um, uh, late 70s, early 80s, modern suburbia okay. to now it's it, the gang warfare all over the area. I mean, and, and a lot of people don't see it, but I do, okay. that if the churches hadn't split the way they did, okay. that you could almost see it like an atomic Tom. bomb and just radiated out from that, from that one church split because it was one of the larger churches in that area. And I'm telling you, it hurt it people and uh, even people my age uh there was a recent reunion with some youth group people and there's some hurting yeah. bitter people in those things and, and they still to this day yeah. some of them aren't some of them are just come to the realization that now that they have kids they need to get back into church <laughs> and i'm like oh uh but you know just that whole the whole bitterness part of it just can stick and and i don't think sometimes when things like that happen the the parents or the adults or the adults <laughs> don't realize <laughs> the, the effect they're going to have on these children for generations. It's like a divorce, like a, it really like a family split. You know, it it it's generational. Like it, it 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 can impact strong, strongly. You know, right? You know, if strongly you know, and you when you leave places, and even if you try to go visit some places, you split from the, the tension is there, the bitterness there, and yet we come in the name of first of Jesus. To, to right. be together, but you can sense the thickness in the air. But oh, I, that's yeah. amazing how it affects the community, though. Oh, oh, it's, it's and and a lot of people don't see it. I do. Wow. And I see it so clearly, um, and have watched that neighborhood uh, before wow. before the current economic situation. I'm talking like ten years ago. Property values were dropping like crazy because the crime rate was going uh, out the roof. Oh. Um, and I, I firmly believe that if that if the churches there had had the effect that they were supposed to have and done proper releasing and proper church government, I think that not that would not have happened. I agree. And so um, I, agree. I, agree. I agree. And even they tried it was another time, a few years during all of this, one of the pastors tried to reunify these two churches that were the main okay. split, okay. but he did it. He was trying to do it in his human strength, okay, okay. and not in the spirit. Okay. And, and there wasn't. He was trying to force it, okay. Okay. and it, it even made it worse. Okay. I, I remember the, the call I got one day from uh, Pastor Steve. You know, I was riding my cell phone wrong. And, you know, he said, hey, "Brother, you know, come talk to me." So we, we met, and I, I, you know, you know, you know, Pastor Steve. You know, I <laughs> so, <laughs> no, very well. <laughs> As we talked, and I and I and I, I met him, and I said this: I wouldn't. I would I, I was to stay where I'm at, then mm -hmm. leave out of there, and he'd not confirm or release me. Out. I just I just don't want to do it. I, I because I felt the pain of not mm -hmm. having that father in my life. I felt mm -hmm. the pain, so I don't want to take no one through that mud. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, of, of of doing that. So I I, I appreciate everything my pastor does for me. Well, you know, starting a church is hard enough as it is. Correct, it is. I mean, you don't need it to start is. off in the hole, oh. <laughs> <laughs> authority-wise. Correct, anyway. correct. You know, correct. and I think there's been a word that authority word's been thrown around, you know, and, and used as a, you know, an iron right, fist right, right. when it really needs to be used more as a uh, as some does, encompassing daddy arms, you know, and, and and there's a time in every man's life right. to be released by his father. Correct, correct. it is. And that, it uh, is. that applies in, in the spiritual it as well, is. so. Well, I'll tell you what, um, now that we've chased that rabbit trail. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed that rabbit trail. <laughs> I, I do too. I, I love talking with church government. I, I, I just do. Oh, uh, let's get into, uh, we're going to kind of introduce, we've only got about 10, uh, a little over 10 minutes left. Let's just kind of introduce our topic for the week okay. Okay. Um, and where people are and, and, and why you felt like uh, this was what you wanted to talk about this week. This is a, you know, my wife, my wife and I were talking last night, and 
It was amazing. She came in the room. I said, I said Felicia, how about having a seat? Sit beside me. She said, oh, my God, what's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong? I said, I'm asking you a question. I said, we, we both, we both are saved. We know God. I said, but why is it that people just don't feel God care? I said, we know God now, you know. Um, and, and I said, there are three people being affected by it with that, with that question. Does God care? And she said, what's you talking about? I said, you know, we got those of uh, those who far from God. Mm -hmm. That's one of those, you know, they, sometimes they far from God because they don't think God care. I said, then you got those who, who have, who may be part of the household of faith, may have done something that was wrong that has been really affected them. Mm -hmm. And they wondered, the backslide one wants, kid, do God care about me? And then there are us who know God, you know, going to church every Sunday, walking by faith. There are moments in our lives where we wonder, does he care? Right. And I believe with the Spirit of God, they've, they've, they've dropped this topic on us. It's going to be a series we're teaching at, at our church also. Um, does God care? Because the economy is slow. People are, people are in position they've never been in before, facing challenges they've never faced before. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can do all the right stuff, and sometimes stuff don't come out right. right. <laughs> <laughs> and it makes you wonder, does he care? You know? Or no, I, I, was, I, I mean, I was born in a family of eight. Dad left, you know, it leaves you wondering mm -hmm. how do we get in this position, the family next door got all this stuff together, you know, right, and might not right. be living in the standard that my mom is living here, and yet things are different in our household, and so right. those questions are out there, and the, but the main question, if I knew God cared, it would, really, it, it would help me, it would reassure me mm -hmm. that things are okay, and I can walk through things different, but that, that, that's a heavy question that people are asking right now. Right. Does he care about me? Why is it important to us that he cares? You, you know, we talked earlier about the family, about mm -hmm. the dad releasing us out. And one, one thing you said earlier about that reassuring that I'm out here, you don't want to start in a hole. Mm -hmm. You know, even though that's going to be challenging with a, with, a, with a church plant, church start, that's challenging within themselves. But knowing that my pastor is concerned about me, knowing that, you know, I can always pick up the phone and call right. and say, hey, hey well, here's where we are right now, you know, what advice you give me, blah, blah, blah. That reassuring, that reassurance, knowing that he cares and loves me, supports me, kind of pushes me a lot that little further and say, you know, okay, let's, let's grab ourselves, let's go a little further. When you know that God can go, life's going to come at your heart. Mm -hmm. Challenges are going to come. We walk by faith, not by sight. I understand that. But stuff happens. But knowing that God cares kind of walk, kind of reassures me. Or I go to the Word and find, some, find a scripture that fits my situation. Mm -hmm. It reassures my faith and might give me strength that I can go through this, that God have not lived higher by myself. <laughs> you know? Well, it gives you that assurance that, you know, when you're getting taught how to ride a bike. Right. You know. Knowing that your dad's there running right along That's beside it. you That's it. is that safety net. And even if uh, n knowing that he's there, right. Right. let's say, you know, we, we all learned how to ride a bike. Right. That's right. And, you know, I remember the first time I did, you know, I made it a little while and then I fell. <laughs> you know, so even if I fell, I knew that he was right, right. there right. to take That's care it. of it. And it was, it. While it hurt to fall, That's right. I knew everything right. was going right. to be okay. That's it. And That's there's it. that safety net aspect of it that just, uh, it I think, that, that really... It, it makes you feel like you can do even more, more and go right, even further right, and, and right, say, right. you know, regardless of how far I fall, if I do, right. that uh, he'll be there to catch yeah. and yeah. he'll be there to uh, support and encourage. And, and I think that's, Correct. if you're out there on your own, that's a scary, oh, scary place. Oh, my God. You know, <laughs> you know, being lost is one thing. Now we got these navigator systems, we got the map, and all this thing. But if you ever get in, in the woods and don't have a compass, Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you, you can't because you, you come through the woods, you go through these bushes, and it all once you get so deep in, it all looks the same. Mm -hmm. You know, but if you don't have a direction or some reassurance with you, man, that's, that's a that's a desert, a, a, a lost feeling. Well, you know, and two, you can have the compass, the GPS, and whatnot, but if the like, okay, every father, a father's one of the father's roles is to teach us common sense. Correct. <laughs> uh, we we were my wife and I were traveling to Gatlinburg and we didn't have a GPS but we had done the uh, the whole uh, internet map searching okay. thing and gotten directions to where we needed to go. We were going to Gatlinburg, and the place we needed to go was on the uh, in Gatlinburg on closer to the 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 national park side of Gatlinburg, okay. not okay. the Pigeon Forge side. Okay. So we took the little the route around the bypass for Gatlinburg and we were going to swing back around 
And the, the instructions told us, and some of you know what I'm talking about, there's, a, there's the bypass and it crosses over Ski Mountain Road. I think, okay. was, or I think that's what it's called, Ski Mountain Road. Well, the map said that I could make a left-hand turn on Ski Mountain Road. Well, I knew because of the common sense that I have <laughs> <laughs> that that wasn't right. Now, I took the road. I said, well, maybe they've changed something in the uh, last few years. Okay. So I took that route. If I had taken a left on this, from the <clears throat> bypass to Ski Mountain Road, okay. it's about a 100-foot drop off of oh, a bridge. Oh, my gosh. The GPS information or the, the map information was wrong oh that I had there. Oh so, but the common sense that I was <laughs> taught, you know, you know, you may have traditional wisdom here. You had traditional wisdom here on my map, uh -huh. you know, that this could be done. Uh -huh. But then the common sense that my father taught me Dude. says, guess what? <laughs> Don't take a left-hand turn. I heard a story the other day that a woman took, followed her GPS to the letter and wound up stuck on a snowmobile path. So... There's a there's some common sense that you're taught when you have when when you know your father cared enough for you mm -hmm. to teach you that common sense. It's the same way with with the Lord. He's taught you mm -hmm. enough so that even if you get current oh, wisdom okay. <laughs> uh, and it all gets messed up, he's given you the common sense or the the he has the he speaks to you to the yeah. point where you know he yeah. cares and yeah. you know to keep you from making that left hand turn. <laughs> I, I looked at it when I finally did get around to Ski Mountain Road. I looked up and I saw that overpass and I went. Oh my goodness! People, somebody's going to somebody's going to drive off that bridge, following those map directions exactly. So anyway, so so God caring about us is important, and that's what we're going to address this week is 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 the importance of that. I tell you what, let's talk just for a sec because we've only got about five minutes left. I want to talk directly to some people who. We're going to get into this this week. Right. We've got scriptures and, and, right. and the whole works. We're going to right. get into the Word because that's what the program is about. But we have people that are watching us right now, and you don't think God cares. And I think the, we could probably give you the, the overview. Yes, He does. That's the, that's the answer. That's the whole week. <laughs> Bye. We'll see you next week. I mean, yes, He does. He does. He does. He does. I, you know, I know that there are times in my life, and I'm going to just give you a quick personal testimony, where I didn't think God right. cared. Right. Because we had, my family had been hurt by pastors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've gone into it a little bit here and there, and one day I'm going to give my whole testimony on the air. But we had been royally messed over by pastors. My dad was on staff at some wow. churches wow. and stuff. And I mean, I'm talking about a secession of pastors. Wow. And then when I left <clears throat> the home, left house to go to college, um, Former Sunday school teacher and his wife were pastors of a small church there in that area. So, I mean, I had known them forever. So I go to their church. Well, then, I mean, three weeks after getting in there, there was a, an uprising amongst the deacon, and they ousted it. So I'm getting, I mean, you know, it was just, I mean, I'm just screaming at God, thinking he doesn't care. But I'll tell you what, years later, God sent a man. Wow. Uh, a and it was in a meeting I did not want to be in. But he let me know that he cared. And, you know, through all, with, him, with me letting him work, letting him clear out some stuff, mm -hmm. I know that he cares. Wow. And, I know, and, and now I'm in a position wow. to host a program wow. that brings pastors wow. on <laughs> and to, to allow them. And, and it honors pastors and it honors the position wow. of pastor. And we know that this show is bearing fruit. Oh. So, awesome. you know, God's brought, God cares. And that's just a little, little quick does. testimony in my own he life. Does. And now, I, now I was the kid who, I don't have, you know, I was one of the, the victim of one of those people because at church we always had the, they would always trot the people with the awesome testimonies, you know, <laughs> the drug addict or the person who beat his wife right. or the person who did this or that. And, you know, all those great testimonies, I'm not belittling right, those. Right, right, right. But I didn't have any of that. <laughs> and you're thinking, man, I'm going to have to go out and get you me a testimony. <laughs> where's, the, where's the closest bar? I need a testimony. But no, I, the, the Lord led me through some stuff, uh -huh. regardless of what had been done to me. Right. And I knew he cared. Because yeah. it ultimately came down to a thing of saying, God, look what they did to me. 
But then he showed me the cross and said, but look what I did for you, you know? And so when, it, when I look at what he did for me and what they did to, to me, me, completely, yeah, I mean, yeah. this, this so far outweighed it. God cares there for you. Um, we're going to take just a second here and we're going to pray. And I want, let's just pray over the rest of this week. I'm going to have okay. you pray. Okay. Um, we just got a couple of minutes. Pray over the rest of the week and for people who need to hear this message this week. And uh, let's, let's set that, that tone right. Then okay. tomorrow we're going to get into this thing okay. and really, really start uh, uh, getting into the Word okay. and delving into that. Go okay. ahead and pray for okay. people. Father God, we thank you now for your presence, your Holy Spirit now, God. We love you and we exalt your holy name. God, there are people watching this program, Father God, that need to know that you care for them, God. Lord God, we thank you for that reassurance, Father God, in that spirit. We pray for the listening audience, Father God, that every word be spoken may fall on good ground, Father God. Every distraction we come against it, Lord, we thank you for the audience, Father God. The one in the hotel room, the one in their home, God, wherever they're listening yes. at, God, we pray and believe in. And we're here to let you know God cares for you. Yes. He thought about you before the foundation of the world. He knows where you're at right now. And we pray that this yes. word reaches that listening ear right now in Jesus' name. Yes. God, we thank you for the opportunity to minister. Lord God, we thank you for the opportunity to sow seed, Father God. And we praise you, God, for the opportunity, Lord God, to, yes. to share among your people, Father God. You care for your people, Father God. We ask you now, as we speak, God, we, we speak with a caring voice. Yes. Lord God, we listen to you with a caring and ear and we thank you for it Lord God in Jesus name yes, God sir. continue amen. to speak in our hearts God we love you and we exalt you for what you're doing in Jesus mighty name amen amen, amen. 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 all right it's a great start to the week don't forget that prayer request line if you uh, if something we've said today uh, resonates with you 478-474-3986 please call that number I also want to put up some of the church information this is uh, uh, brother Levi Rozier from Harvest Builders Center uh, in Warner Robins. There's the information. Um, they meet at uh, 10 a.m. at the Warner Robins Conference Center. I also want to give their website, uh, harvestbuilderscenter.com. And there's a phone number you can get in touch with them if you need something, if you want to find out more about the church, if you're, if you're interested. If, and believe me, we don't <laughs> believe in sheep stealing. So if you find yourself <laughs> at a place where you don't have a church home, Check them yes. out. I know they'll be uh, happy to, to welcome you with open arms and to love on you. Teach you the Word of God and uh, let that become the, the changing agent in your life. It's about all the time we've got for today, uh, but we hope that you join us tomorrow and the rest of the week for another edition of The Pastor's Heart. Mm -hmm.